So I think we all roughly agree that we're in a, a serious situation. There may be some debate we could have about just how bad that situation is. Is there anything else that you'd like to add that you think that people need to bear in mind beyond the short answer I just made us give to this question that you think is particularly important about where we are right now? There's so many things we could say. What, what are one or two things that any of you would like to add? It looks like Sam has something. Spencer, uh, I mean, we're not in a crisis like we've seen with natural disasters where lives are threatened and people's daily lives are upset so much, you know, that and Zach's facing this in Santa Cruz County. But I think we're in a political crisis, and I think we also have seen that out of that political crisis, just like in a national disaster, we have first responders. And those first responders in this nation are our communities all around the country. And when you think of what the Women's March did in, in, in being a first responder, you think about the Climate Change March, the uh, Pro-Science March, the Anti-Tax uh, uh, Cut uh, Protest March, um, the number of town hall meetings that Congress members are having to have and the, and the, and the attendance of those town hall meetings. So I think that there is a, 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 a you know, sort of the, maybe perhaps a rebuilding or refreshing of the building of a democracy. And what's really interesting about it, it isn't led like it was in the 60s by a Eugene McCarthy or somebody like that. It's really just led by community by community. It's street people coming together and, and organizing at the community level. And that goes to Zach's point about you know, a well-informed and, and participatory uh, constituency. You know, one thing that, that I would cite as a sign of hope, perhaps, at where we are right now, and to, I'll, I will try uh, to interject some signs of, of hope. The, the title this evening is Their Hope, so we're going to be looking for opportunities to identify some hope. And that's that a lot, of, a lot of the turmoil we see now does cut across party lines, that we can set aside some of the policy arguments that Democrats have with Republicans and vice versa, and see that there genuinely are thoughtful people across the ideological spectrum who's, who are concerned about questions like the rule of law and the free press. And these should be non-ideological issues. And I think it's actually a hopeful sign that we see how many people there are across the spectrum who, who share those concerns. Have you had that experience? You find yourself agreeing with people that you might never have agreed with before in some ways? Yeah, right now, actually. <laughs> uh, but, but I... <laughs> But my, my sense is, I, think, I just think that the system's been tested a lot harder than it is right now. Again, we just think about, the his, about history. I mean, you think about the Civil War, again, as, as a perfect example, where the country literally broke in two, and then less than 50 years later, people were fighting side by side in the First World War. After just 50 years before, they'd been you know, trying to tear this country apart. My sense, though, is that the fact that people care and are engaged, that's a clue that people don't trust the way that things are currently going, but you could only do that within a democracy. That's what's interesting about this discussion, is that the system that we have, I have enough faith in the system we have, the structure we have, because of the way that people are showing up to say something just doesn't feel right about the way the separation of powers is existing right now. And you just wouldn't have that say in a lot of other countries. You wouldn't have that ability to actually have that. Because you're rising up and saying that gives me a lot of hope actually, that, that the structure and the system will withstand this. We saw the contrast with the, the Kurdish protesters against the visit of Erdogan from Turkey. Was that yesterday? That stuff oh, happened so fast. The and the DC police rushed in to, protest, to protect the protesters. And, and we were all outraged at the treatment of the protesters. Adrian? Yeah, and I think you know, the outcome may be displeasing. The outcome of this last election may be displeasing to a lot of us, but to the points that, that others have made, I mean, the system is still strong. We can still protest. Nobody you know, yet has lost their right to vote. Right? There are still things we can do, but I think this is a good wake-up call. The system has been tested in far more extreme ways um, throughout our history, but I think this is it's such a good warning that maybe we were getting a little bit too comfortable. Maybe we weren't as engaged as we should have been. Um, and it's good to have, I think, a warning like this, as bad as it is, it's good to have a warning like this and not something like we've seen um, in our nation's not too distant past. You know, we got here, in my mind, because we got a little comfortable, right? We all sort of looked at, at candidate Trump, um, and I guess I should say maybe we progressives right, looked at candidate Trump and didn't really take it seriously. Um, and as you said, I don't think any of this started with Trump or his, his candidacy, but there has been sort of a comfortability. Um,